Well, Convergence exists to encounter Jesus and transform cities with his power and with his love. And that's why, that's why we're here today. And uh, I wanted to just show again our 2023 uh, vision recap video. So much to be thankful for. And by the way, I'm thankful to have my mom here. She is amazing. And uh, she's my greatest encourager. She makes me feel like a hero, even if I just change a light bulb. She's amazing. And I love you, mom. And it's such a joy and honor to have you with us today. Well, hey, we do have so much to be thankful for. And uh, last week, we launched into a series about a healthy heart. And uh, I want to jump off that this week, that a healthy, healthy heart is a grateful heart. And uh, those of you that know me know that I'm looking, any excuse to preach on Thanksgiving, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on board. It's one of my very favorite uh, subjects in Scripture. And we're going to have communion at the end. So I uh, just want to let you know that's, uh, that's where we're headed. I've got mine all ready to go here, see? This is part of being prepared to preach these days. you got to make sure you can unwrap your communion. I'm thankful. <laughs> so a healthy heart is a grateful heart. And the Bible tells us that in the last days, Difficult times will come, and men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, and unholy. And I don't have to tell you that, that, uh, that we, live, we live in those days. And I'm just so thankful that we have something that is much more powerful than what's in the world. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And so while this is going on, the Bible says about you that you've been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. Can we say that together? Overflowing with gratitude. Um, I believe that's who you already are, but I believe that there's more. And I believe we're going to leave here today flowing in new levels and overflowing in a greater way with gratitude. And so a grateful heart overtakes any ingratitude in our own hearts, and it also dispels the ingratitude that's in the atmosphere around us. You are, you are not a victim of the atmosphere. You're, you're not a thermometer to just reading the atmosphere. You are a thermostat that changes the atmosphere. And just one word of gratitude out of your lips can shift the atmosphere. I've seen it happen so many times that in places, you know, people are just complaining, all this or that. And one person says, well, I'm just thankful. And the atmosphere shifts 
It has to shift because what the gratitude inside of you is so much more powerful than the spirit of the age. And so we are here to shift atmospheres. And the most important thing, though, is I've got to make sure that the atmosphere in here is shifted and that this atmosphere is full of gratitude. And then out of that, it flows out of me into the world around me. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And something happens in your prayer life when you shift into that place of thanksgiving. A grateful heart shifts anxious thoughts to thankful prayers. And so we can actually... Think into the future because anxiety, every anxious thought was meant to be a thankful prayer. And so we don't have to waste time on anxiety when we have been given the capacity to pray and commune with God. Holy Spirit is praying inside of you and you can pray 24-7. And so when anxiety, when we're in that place of anxiety, it's just a moment to stop and say, okay, I'm going to shift into thanksgiving. And you begin to thank God for who he is. You begin to thank him for what he's done. And we can even thank him into the future. And this is something that really helps with anxiety. You build on what he's done in the past, and you're thankful for his faithfulness in the past, but you begin to thank him for what he's doing in the future, even though you don't know exactly what he's doing in the future, but you know he's a good, awesome God, and he's faithful, and he's in control, so I can thank him into the future. God, I thank you for the provision that is coming my way, because you've been faithful to provide for me all of my life. I thank for... I'm thankful for the provision that's in this season because you see every need and you meet every need that I have. So worry is a mental preoccupation with a possible negative event that may occur in the future. But gratitude is preoccupation with a good and a faithful God. And our faithful God did great things in the past. He's doing great things in the present. He's doing great things in the present in this room right now. And he's doing great things in the future. And so gratitude and thanksgiving obliterate anxiety. And sometimes we're we're trying to get something out of our life and we need to put something into our life. Sometimes we're trying to get anxiety out of our life. And I want to challenge you, put some anxiety in. I mean, put some, <laughs> put some anxiety out. <laughs> put some gratitude in. <laughs> some of you are going to remember that. That's what you're going to remember about today, <laughs> but you're going to remember it. <laughs> put some gratitude in, and anxiety has to take a hike. It has, it has to go in Jesus' name. A grateful heart is thankful for what God did in the past is doing in the present, and what he will do in the future. And so where you're battling anxiety about the future, begin to thank God into the future. Thank him for his faithfulness that he's already providing for what you need in the future. All right. So a healthy Thanksgiving diet reaches into the past. It brings into the present and launches us into the future. And we're going to overflow with thanksgiving. Revelation 4 eight, looking into heaven, it says, The four living creatures, each one of them having six wings and full of eyes around and within, and day and night they do not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. And so with every dynamic of worship, we want to thank him for who he was, who he is right now, and who he is about to be to us in the future. Who he is in the future. Thinking back into the past prepares you to declare his faithfulness into the future. All right, so we're going to look in Luke 17. 
And we're going to look at Jesus. And it says in Luke 17, 11, that while he was on his way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And he entered a village, and ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him. And they had to stand at a, a distance. You weren't allowed to go close to someone when you had leprosy. You even had to cry out, unclean. And so they raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And that's just always a great prayer. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on us, God. And when he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest, as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, out of the ten, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And I want to encourage us to be that one. There's the pressure of the nine others <laughs> that don't want to turn around and go back, but I want to encourage you to be the one. And it's so interesting here, I was, as I was reading this this week, Jesus told them even to go to the priest. And it was like if you took it in a very legalistic sense, you, could, you know, the others could have said, look, we're, Jesus said to go to the priest, we're going to go to the priest, but one stopped and said, no, I'm going to the priest, but first I'm going to give thanks. And I want to encourage us to be that one, to be that one in your family when something's gone the wrong direction. One person can bring that shift. One person can bring that shift at your place of work. Be the one that chooses to be grateful. Giving thanks is the narrow way. It is not the way of the world. The way of the world is to have that ungrateful, entitled attitude. I'm owed more. I'm owed something better. All the advertising that's pouring into us, you deserve better. You deserve that car. You deserve this credit card. <laughs> the world is always telling us that we deserve more. So verse 15 says, Now one of them, when he saw that he'd been healed, turned back glorifying God. He saw. And a grateful heart comes from seeing life from a different perspective. People with grateful hearts, they see reality. They see how much they've been given, that they deserve nothing, and they've been given everything. My daughter, when she was in high school, her school went to India, and... Uh, I remember talking to her on the phone from India, how hard it was <laughs> and how she was being stretched. And, uh, but the biggest, the biggest change was, was she came back and, you know, we were up there and I remember being up there in a room and she was unpacking and I, I said something and she said this phrase that I had hardly, hadn't heard that much in a while from her. She said, thank you, dad. <laughs> It was like her, her perception of the world and what she had had totally shifted in a week of going to another place. She saw things. She saw her world differently. And she came back and said, thank you. A grateful heart sees the moment and seizes the opportunity to give thanks. And I believe we're going to be much more aware of those opportunities to give thanks and to seize those moments. I want to show you another video. Lord, cure us of our addiction. Waiting for the next season of life to think we're good enough. Waiting for the next 
number on the scale to say we're okay enough. Waiting for the next stream, the next house, the next step up. The next bend in the road that finally makes us feel we've arrived at contentment. Forgive us, Lord, for our waiting room addiction. Addicted to always thinking we're in a waiting room. Counting down the days till we enter real life. And real life is happening right now. And you are the one waiting for us to give you thanks for the miracle of now. Wake us up out of our waiting room addiction. I'm 25 days thankful for our baby's laughter. I'm 15 days thankful that who I am is enough. And cure us with thanksgiving. I'm three months thankful for where I'm living right now. I'm 45 days thankful for my life now. Show us how we have room in our lives to give you thanks right now. I'm three weeks thankful that I have a job to provide for my family. I'm one day thankful for the gift of now. A grateful heart finds a way to give thanks in every situation. First Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything give thanks in every situation there is a place for thanksgiving and people with grateful hearts get really good at finding ways to give thanks even in the midst of difficult situations in everything give thanks for this is God's will you want to know God's will for your life start thanking him I believe if we if we in everything give thanks, I believe he's going to have us in the center of his will. I believe he can get me there if I have a grateful heart. In everything give thanks. So a grateful heart helps us see what we already have so we aren't always wanting more. We step back and we look at what we have. At all that we have been given. And we step out of the pressure of the world saying, you can be happy when you have more. No, I'm happy right now. I'm thankful right now. I have been showered with blessings right now. So one of them, when he saw that he'd been healed, he turned back glorifying God with a loud voice. And just to say that the same... The same Jesus that healed those men of leprosy is in this room as healer right now. That he's still just as much healer today as he was then. And he had no trouble healing these ten men of leprosy. This Jesus heals. He heals cancer. He heals every disease. And he is present and alive right now to heal and restore Jesus heals it's who he is it's his name it's what he's purchased for us by his stripes we are healed and so let's receive that in this room this morning so one of them when he saw that he'd been healed he turned back glorifying God with a loud voice a grateful heart seizes every opportunity to give thanks Going out of our way, stepping back. You've already left the room. It's worth going back to say, thank you. Thank you for the way that you waited on us today. Thank you for serving us graciously. A grateful heart seizes the opportunities. Got another video for you. Let's turn it up real loud so we can hear it.
grateful heart seizes every opportunity to express thanksgiving. And so I want to encourage you to turn back and step into the chair. <laughs> Just as one turned back and gave thanks to Jesus. And as you go on, it says, one of them, when he saw that he'd been healed, he turned back and he glorified God. And I want to encourage us to continue, continue glorifying God. And it says with a loud voice. When I looked at that this week in the Greek, uh, which a grateful heart loudly and unashamedly gives thanks, but uh, the word there for loud, it, mega plus phone. And uh, I want to encourage you to take up the thank you Gratitude, Thanksgiving megaphone this week. It's powerful. It releases light and life into the atmosphere when you loudly glorify and unashamedly glorify God. So don't hold back. Don't hold back. Um, you're probably not overthinking. I haven't had to correct anyone for overthinking. Don't hold back. Verse 16. He fell at his face and at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. A grateful heart flows out of a humble spirit that refuses entitlement. This man, he went down, he went down to his knees. And also it tells us that he was a Samaritan. And, uh, you know, Jews and Samaritans didn't get along well. And, and so he would kind of be considered the lowest. And, and so he was coming with the, like the least entitlement of something is feeling like something was owed to him. As a Samaritan, he'd be like nothing was owed to him, that this Jewish man would, would talk to him. And so he came and he humbled himself. And a grateful heart flows out of a humble spirit that refuses entitlement. Gratitude is the overflow of a humble heart just as surely as an ungrateful, complaining spirit flows out of a proud heart. So sometimes we've got to let the Lord do a work in our hearts and bring us and show us those places that don't line up with humility. And let him root out any pride and any entitlement that's in our hearts of saying, I deserve, I deserve better. In Hebrews, it, it describes what it's going to be like um, in the last days. Again, it says, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Anybody experiencing any shaking? It's the world that we live in and there's going to be more shaking. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But with the shaking, there's good news because this expression, yet once more, denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken as of created things so that those things which cannot be shaken will remain. <laughs> and the things that can be shaken are the things that we don't need. And they're being shaken so that we can begin to be in touch with what's real, what's reality, and what's going to last. And so the shaking is actually great news. It's a shaking away of what needs to be and what must be shaken away. So therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable servants with reverence and awe. So in the midst of the shaking, we are being given the kingdom of God which cannot be shaken, which is eternal reality, which is your home. This earth is not your home. You're part of an invisible kingdom. What we see is not going to last, but the unseen is what is real. And so we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken in the midst of the shaking. And in the midst of all of that, 
we show gratitude by which we offer to God. It's like through gratitude, through thanksgiving, through gracious, grateful hearts, we are offering up as, as things are shaking, as we are receiving this kingdom that cannot be shaken, we are offering to God our worship with reverence and awe, but we're doing it through thanksgiving. Let us show gratitude. That's how we're receiving this kingdom which cannot be shaken through gratitude, through thanksgiving. 2 Corinthians 9.15, one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture. Paul has actually been describing giving and sowing and reaping and giving with a cheerful heart. And he just bursts out and he says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, the gift of Jesus. And there's something that I believe helps in our thanksgiving that helps kind of recalibrate us. That's what the cross is about. All eternity is about, it's about the cross. Even, even on the throne of God, there's a lamb on the throne. A lamb who was slain for us. And so he's saying, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And this is where we always come back to and we center our thanksgiving. This is why Marcy and I, in our home, almost every day, we, we celebrate communion together in our home. Because we're bringing it back. It recalibrates us. We're coming back to that focus of the cross. That all of history is about the cross and the finished work of Jesus. And so Paul bursts out here and he just says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And I want to encourage you in the moments where you're struggling to find something to be thankful for. You're, you're wrestling, you're battling something. Maybe you're, it's a moment where, where you're in pain. Whatever it is, and I don't know how to give thanks, I just go back and I begin to say, Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. And as I do that, something happens, and I begin to be able to be thankful for a lot more. But there, we can never, ever overthink God for the cross. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. A grateful heart is centered on the finished work of Jesus on the cross. And in this room, I'm, I'm looking at those who've been transformed by his love, by his life. I'm looking at, at those of us who this morning felt the presence of of the living God himself in a way that billions of people on this earth have never, ever felt one ounce of in their entire life. And this morning, we were overtaken by his presence. We have so, so much to be thankful for. That you've even heard the name of Jesus is reason to give thanks for the rest of eternity. And that in his sovereignty, in his grace, in his mercy, out of all the people even in this city right now, here in Fort Worth, Texas, who do not know him. You know him. He chose you. <laughs> he found you. He looked at you and said, I want that one. And he chose you. How could we ever overthink him for what he has done, for what he has given to us, for his faithfulness to us, that he who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it. 
So a grateful heart is centered in on the work of Jesus on the cross. And I want to encourage you to often focus and thank Jesus for the cross. It, it just brings this, it's like a divine reset that brings us back to the center of all existence and creation and focus the cross, the finished work of Jesus. So when you don't know what to give thanks for, thank him. Thank him for the cross. Start there and recenter. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. So I want us this morning to take our communion. Give you a moment there to unwrap it. The, one of the hardest things we do in church these days. <laughs> I've kind of wanted to make a comedy video about that, like just somebody struggling to, you know. <laughs> All right, we'll bring this back around. In a serious moment. <laughs> That's right. There we go. <laughs> Gratitude. Thank you, Lord. I'm able to have communion. <laughs> oh. His body was broken. Why don't you take that little, little wafer there and, and just break it, symbolizing Jesus took the bread and he broke it. It was a picture of his body. Jesus, we thank you that your body was broken for us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for every drop of your blood. Thank you for the beating that you took for us, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you became sin so that we might become and be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that you're the great high priest. Thank you. Thank you for your body. Thank you that by your stripes we are healed. Thank you, Jesus that we receive now a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Thank you for your body. So he broke the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take, take and eat. drop of your blood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just take it in. and we're not going to drink it yet, but I just want you to speak thanksgiving even just over the cup. Thank you. Thank you. Just literally speak it out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for choosing and calling me. Thank you for this moment in your presence, in eternity, in the kingdom which cannot be shaken. Jesus, thank you that we are surrounded by the elders crying out, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God that was slain for the sins of the world. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. 
thank you that we're going to behold you and be transformed for all eternity in your presence, Jesus. Thank you that we are seated with you in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. And that, thank you that we have come to a throne of mercy and grace. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cup. The cup of the new covenant in your blood. And so that's, Jesus said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Take and drink. I want us to stand. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. And I want us just all around the room right now to just begin to just speak out loud. Thanks to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your resurrection. Thank you for pouring out the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for air to breathe and water to drink. Thank you for food that you give me to eat, God. Thank you for family and this friends. Thank you for this house. Thank you for this people, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for second, third, fourth, fifth chances with you, God. Thank you for new beginnings. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. You know, right now, I just, I just see us just all around the room. As you have something you're thankful for, just shout it out. Just shout it out right now. We're just... just 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 shout out that thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus, for what... Just say it out loud. Thank you. Just speak it out right now. With a loud voice, glorifying God. They tur he turned and went back to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. our ministry teams to come on up here to the front. Thankful for them. Father, I thank you that today as we go out from this place, that we go out overflowing, overflowing with gratitude. 
I, I just, I was just even feeling as I was praying here that there are going to be those of you this week that actually there's going to be a shift in your body as there's a shift in your heart in this area of gratitude. I felt like arthritis pain is going to, is going to leave pain and joints just be removed other pains I, I just feel like as we overflow with gratitude there's going to be things that even happen as our bodies respond to our aligning our hearts in a grateful place i see people i see you texting sending thank you texts notes see you shifting atmospheres places that you go thank you God thank you thank you Jesus Thanks. thank you God thank you Look at the person next to you and say, hey, I'm thankful for you. <laughs> I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for you. God bless you. Bless you as you go. We've got these teams up here. They're here to pray with you, to stand with you. If you need healing, you need just someone to agree with you in a prayer. They're here. I bless you as you go. I bless you this week as you overflow with gratitude.